Dr Landsberg, what is the current status of the management of familial hypercholesterolemia in Europe? Some countries have always been already involved to a certain extent in finding FH patients, managing FH patients, not only the Netherlands, but for instance in Norway, they had a very active group who was already starting in the late 80s, early 90s. Um, I think due to the renewed interest, partly based because of the new therapies that are coming towards us, there is a, a wave of interest that is uncommon. I've, I've, I've been involved with FH now for almost 30 years and in the last few years I can see that everybody is getting more excited about finding these patients, diagnosing these patients and treating these patients. So the good news is I think we're all starting now to, to see how important it is uh, and the bad news is that we're just starting. You know, it's, it is uh, a lot that needs to be done, although the basics is quite simple. Uh, really proper executing it and making sure that we properly manage the patients, their families, uh, is a challenge. But fortunately, uh, there are models that we can implement and, and we have already proof of principle, for instance in Norway and in Holland, that it is possible to, uh, to really address this issue on a national level. So what are the barriers to improving the management of people with FH? Um, I think the biggest barrier is uh, the lack of knowledge about the disease. Um, in many cases, when I talk to physicians the first time, they say, oh, FH, yeah, that's, that's really an exotic disease. I don't see these patients. I don't have these patients. But once you start really discussing it and explaining to them some of the characteristics, uh, and very valuable is, of course, the family history and the premature atherosclerotic disease. They say, oh, yeah, I have, I have a few patients that had their first MI at 40 or 41. Uh, did you check your cholesterol? Yeah, I think I checked it, and it was like 7 or 8, or in milligrams per milliliter per, per deciliter, it was like 300 or 250. And then when you explain the context, they say, oh, yeah, maybe we do have some people and interestingly, once they start, it gets a snowball effect and they start to realize, oh, man, hey, there's another family, there's another family. And you can see that it has a huge impact in their practice, particularly in the physicians that take care of cardiology patients or cardiologists, because that's sort of a, an area where all these patients tend to get together once they have their first event. But even in general practitioners, um, we find that it's, you know, if you have a fairly uh, sized practice of say maybe two, three thousand patients, there is potentially um, eight, nine patients with FH that you could harvest from your from your clinical registry. And what we've learned from our from our national screening program that if you find your first index case, there is approximately eight affected family members surrounding that index case. So it's highly profitable to use that approach in finding FH patients. How does someone know whether they're at risk or not? I think the most important characteristics in these families is premature coronary artery disease. Premature means before the age of 50, 55 um, in males uh, and before the age of 60, 55 in females. Um, a cardiovascular complication like an MI or having a bypass surgery is indicative, especially if you're not the only one in that family. And many times you hear, oh yeah, it's my uncle that had an MI at, at 40. And I remember my grandfather, he died at the age of 42 and we didn't know exactly what was wrong. And by the way, I, I remember my, my cousin had a very high cholesterol level. Well, these are the kind of stories that are like red flags all over the place. And then the next step is very simple to do a lipid management or a lipid measurement to find out if the LDL level is very elevated. Uh, one really important pointer, if you have a family where uh, in the adult population the lipid levels sometimes get, uh, get elevated because of lifestyle factors and other factors. In children, especially in young children, these factors are not as prevalent or not as strong yet. So if you find a high cholesterol level in a child, 
that is almost a 90, 95% sure diagnosis. So that's one of the approaches we, we always advise also if you do a family screening. Um, if there are children that are potentially affected because one of the parents is affected, that gives you a very good tool to make a proper diagnosis in a very simple fashion. If you could give two or three pieces of advice to other countries to improve their management of FH, what would that advice be? And there are three really important ingredients. I think the first and foremost, you need to have a dedicated fool, somebody who is really focused on this issue and wants to put a lot of energy into it because he will feel the responsibility and will keep on trucking because he knows the importance of it. And in all the situations where this was successful, this was one of the key characteristics. Second thing is you need a patient organization. They give you support from a lot of different angles. And particularly, and that's the third thing you need, you need involvement from the government. You need some support from your health authority or from your governmental organization. And having a patient organization in this triangle really pushes that forward as well. Now, if you have these three, the rest, which is also very important, like all the technical aspects of doing the diagnosis or the, the genetic aspects, the treatment, and even the financial aspect, will sort of fall into place. Uh, once you have somebody that pushes the thing, you have support from your patient that really tries to fire it up, and finally a government or a health authority that says, you're right, this is our responsibility, we really have to do and change something, and we'll, we will support you. And the interesting thing is, that it is really cost effective. I mean, in the, lo in, the, in the short term, you have to invest, but in the long term, it pays it back many, many, many fold. So what do you think the future holds? Well, it, it's interesting. It, I, I feel that what we're doing with FH is, is not only a program that's focusing on this particular disease, but I think it's sort of a model which is like the next paradigm shift in medicine. Um, if you look from the history, I think there were three major paradigm shifts in the in history of medicine. The first one was in the late 1800s, 1900s, where we started to discover the anatomy or the end results of disease. And that gave us a huge advantage in how to, to take care and manage these patients in a very primitive fashion. Then the second one came in the beginning of the 20th century when we learned about the physiology of disease. And the blood was a major part of how we could deal with infectious disease, cholesterol, risk factors, cancer. And we learned how to manage the disease while it was developing and sometimes stopped it, arrested it. And now we're entering the third paradigm, which is the biology of the disease which is the genetics and the cause of the disease. And that makes it possible to do something that is unheard of in, in traditional Western medicine. We can prevent the disease before it's happening. We have 20% children that we find in our genetic screening program that can be treated at a very early age. Their outlook for the future is, is much, much brighter than the ones that are actually not discovered by the program that we're doing. And I'm not, not comparing the FH and non-FH, I'm actually talking about FH and, uh, and people who are in, in, in a normal cholesterol situation. We've learned from studies that in patients who are found in screening programs, be it individual or national screening programs, not only their incidence of cardiovascular disease goes down dramatically, but also their incidence in other chronic disease. They have 60% less colon cancer, 60% less lung cancer. Why? Because they not only take more care in using the medication that lowers cholesterol, but they have a better lifestyle, they exercise more, their diet is better, and they never smoke. And that impact provides a much better outcome in the future. So that I think that model, using an approach where you can discover by genetics, by lipidomics, metabolomics, system biology, individuals that are prone to develop the disease, so the predictive part, 
we can then do something to prevent it and use methods that are personalized. We use a specific treatment. And within that context, we need the patients also to participate. So the participatory concept of, of this disease management. And those, those are the four Ps that everybody is sort of talking about, prediction, prevention, personal life, and participatory. We have the FH screening program, which is exactly a reflection of that method. So once we have that system in place, we can sort of transplant that for other diseases, genetic cardiomyopathies, genetic colon cancer. I think there's a multitude of problems that, that are open to this kind of approaches, but we have to start making people enthusiastic about it. 